we've done a ton of Spongebob live action reenactments here on this channel, and I sure have put together quite a few YouTube poops based on cartoons. Why don't we follow that cartoon motif, but in a totally new way, while also tying into Halloween? Welcome to our top 10 most disturbing cartoon episodes list. For this list, I'm looking at episodes of children's cartoons that managed to terrify me beyond belief as a kid, or ones that managed to unsettle me now as an adult. Keep in mind that this isn't just a list of the scariest episodes. I'm certainly looking at episodes with scary moments, but I'm also taking into consideration which themes the episodes decides to delve into. Because it's pretty insane to see serious and often disturbing adult issues tackled in kids' cartoons. One last thing. I obviously haven't seen every cartoon ever made, so this is just my personal opinion on what the most disturbing cartoon episodes are. Don't take it too seriously if you don't agree with all my picks. And let me know if I missed any. Anyway, let's get started. This is the top 10 most disturbing cartoon episodes. You know, people really don't give Jimmy Neutron enough credit in regards to how fucked up it could get. Jimmy, your mom is dead. Okay, Denny. I was often terrified to watch this show and see what weird science-y thing would go wrong in each episode. This show's given us some pretty creepy childhood memories, which brings us to my pick for this list, Sheen's Brain. In this episode, Sheen wants to get smarter in order to do well on the test, so Jimmy builds him a brain-enhancing helmet. Not only does it work, it works a little too well, to the point where Sheen's head won't stop growing. He develops both an arrogant persona and psychic mind powers, and those prove to be a frightening combination. This episode is disturbing for a number of reasons. For example, they literally say that Sheen's brain will explode if he doesn't get the helmet on and drain his brain, as if his grotesque swollen head wasn't disturbing enough on its own. But a lot of the creepiness factor comes from Sheen himself, who goes from a goofy, innocent sidekick to a ruthless overlord, who uses the townsfolk as his personal playthings. Though, he still manages to keep his goofy persona throughout, which is why this one landed at the bottom of the list. A lot of it is still pretty absurd and cartoony, but let's see how quickly you think in quicksand. <laughs> what? When this episode gets creepy, man, does it nail it. You dare to honor me? Feel the wrath of my rainbow. Time for a Spongebob episode. Only two problems though. Number one, we don't want to get Viacommed. And number two, it's hard to find Spongebob footage online. Hmm. Time for an impromptu live action episode. Okay, so like in this one, d d Spongebob is going to the d jellyfish land. So he's got to get to the jellyfish, but the Squidward has to watch the Gary because he can't just leave Gary alone at the house, but then Squidward doesn't watch Gary, and Gary's uh, he's gonna die now, he's, uh, he's sick. But Squidward's gotta get the snail po into Gary, but he injects the, the, the sponge man with the snail po, and now SpongeBob is is turning into a snail and it's really scary and then he goes to Squidward's house and it's really scary and he's going and now the Squidward gets turned into a snail and it's creepy. That's the episode. That was very poorly edited. So yeah, this episode was really creepy as a kid and even now it's a pretty disturbing, albeit nonsensical setup. In terms of its overall quality, it's probably one of the weaker episodes of pre-movie Spongebob, but hey, anything to avoid talking about modern Spongebob. Speaking of which, I guess episodes like Squid's Visit or Squid Bob Tentacle Pants are creepier technically, but I kinda like to pretend that modern Spongebob doesn't exist. Aside from whichever episode gave us Handsome Squidward, that is. I said implications could really shoot the disturbingness factor up a few pegs? Well, in Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Star lives in a dimension where their version of puberty 
involves turning into a mindless, six-armed purple moth creature that imprisons every male in their general vicinity. Well, now I've heard everything. When you say things are gonna get weird, do you mean typical star weird or like destroy the school weird? Destroy the school. Muberty raises so many questions on how people in Star's dimension even function. But the creepiness in this episode doesn't stop with the concept alone. This is a tense, atmospheric episode with really good buildup. The star of the show here is really the eerie music and sound effects. Coupled with the visuals, it makes an already creepy idea that much more horrifying. Gotta love how twisted these writers are. We can do all kinds of witchy stuff with this thing. Can we use it to get my parents to stop fighting? Totally. After years of avoiding Steven Universe due to its notorious fanbase and the overall sense of it's popular so it sucks syndrome, I finally gave the show a shot and... yeah, it's fantastic. Don't expect me to make a ton of mashups of it since YouTube is practically drowning in those these days. Damn it, I wish I had the idea to make a vid of Pearl singing Satisfied. But getting back on track, let's talk about Gem Drill. And Steven, we love you. In this episode, Steven and Peridot have to drill to the Earth's center to stop a hideous mass of deformed gems called the Cluster from destroying the Earth. The Cluster had been built up for quite some time as this terrifying, unstoppable force. And long story short, it didn't disappoint. <laughs> Seeing these haunting faces, hearing a huge chorus of creepy voices, and witnessing this as Steven and Peridot are trapped in this tiny pod, all adds up to one hell of a disturbing episode. I'm not a claustrophobic person at all, but this episode gave me legit anxiety as I saw Steven getting a panic attack when trapped in the confines of this pod and surrounded by the spirits within the cluster. I can't remember the last time any TV show, let alone a cartoon, made me feel that way. Props to this episode for utterly fucking with my senses and delivering a terrifying episode. Even if it does have a heartwarming ending. Did you destroy the cluster? No. I talked to it. You what? Admit it, you probably forgot Star Wars The Clone Wars was a kid's show. It's pretty beloved by Star Wars fans, even the prequel haters, myself included. And even though the show gradually became more adult as it went on, the second to last season still had an entire arc about a tiny frog and a bunch of droids going on a mission and making some really unfunny banter. So, yeah, I think it's safe to say that this was still a kid's show, even as it neared the end of its run. With that said, Massacre is an impressive episode not just for how disturbing it is, but for how much variety there is in its disturbingness. It's a rare episode that features no Republic forces and thus no heroes, per se. It's just villains against villains as Count Dooku sends General Grievous and the droid army to wipe out the Night Sisters, including his former apprentice, Asajj Ventress. The resulting battle is, what else? A massacre. A really, really fucked up massacre. There's a lot of murder for a kid's show, but since this is the Clone Wars, that's not out of the ordinary. So this episode decides to throw in really creepy zombies, and that definitely ups the disturbingness factor significantly. But considering the show already did an arc involving zombies a few seasons ago, the episode realizes that in order to truly crank the creepiness factor up to 11, it needs to give us something totally new and super terrifying. Boy does it deliver. Mother Talzin makes a voodoo doll out of Count Dooku and manages to torture him in order to make him call off the attack. I don't even know where to start with this. First of all, voodoo dolls. Second, the fact that we're seeing Dooku in a position of extreme vulnerability is one of the scariest things this show has given us. This is a guy who's always calm and collected no matter the circumstances, so, so to suddenly see him begging for Grievous to kill Talzin and save his life is so unnerving. You must stop Mother Talzin before she kills me! Quickly! He's the main villain of the series, we shouldn't be freaked out that he's being tortured and yet it's just a huge shift from what we know about his character, that it really cements this episode as the absolute creepiest that the Clone Wars has to offer. That's disgusting. Blah 
blah, blah, Avatar, blah, 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 the Puppet Master, blah, 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 holy shit, bloodbending is terrifying. I don't even know what else to say. Everybody talks about this episode, both in regards to how good it is and how creepy it is. It's actually my number one priority to watch every time Halloween rolls around. Even though the creepy stuff doesn't really start happening until the last seven or eight minutes, the build-up to these disturbing elements is just phenomenal. What cements this episode's creepiness is the fact that it's probably the biggest downer ending on the list. In order to stop Hana from killing her friends, Katara actually has to use bloodbending on her, which is exactly what Hana wanted. Congratulations, Katara. You're a bloodbender. The episode ends with Katara crying, and that's it. It sucks that this episode's events weren't really brought up again, because it would have been really powerful to see if this experience continued to torment her. We've seen so many cartoons where a single event can affect characters for many episodes to come, and we've seen it in this show a few times too. So while it's kind of disappointing this moment was never brought up again, I think the fact that I'm disappointed just speaks to how well done this scene an entire episode was. Put this one on your list of Halloween traditions. I've never felt more alive. No, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm so alive. Yes, the eternal struggle of most disturbing cartoon episodes lists, which is... Which episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog do I go with? The show had a reputation of being the absolute scariest children's show ever made, which makes it so hard to single out one episode in particular for this list. So instead of going with my most traumatic childhood experience, or hopelessly trying to rewatch every episode in search of the creepiest one, I decided to pick something a little different. The Mask. Now I'll be honest, as a kid, this actually was the most disturbing episode of the show for me. All I knew was that this mysterious masked figure came to the farm and she constantly beat Courage up and repeated that all dogs are evil. Not only was this constant abuse to Courage pretty scary, but I was always just afraid of masks in general as a kid. I blame Darth Vader. I always had to shut my eyes at the end of Return of the Jedi whenever he took his helmet off, or hell, even during that one tiny scene in Empire. Yet somehow I was totally fine the first time I watched Revenge of the Sith. Huh, go figure. But the real reason I consider this episode the most disturbing one in the entire show is its subject matter. Courage, that outlandish show about random monsters and bizarre humor, is giving us an episode about domestic abuse. My closest friend, Bunny. Yes? Fell in love with a gangster. He treats her like she's a slave. <laughs> My kind of guy. Not okay! Yeah, fuck you, Eustace. The masked figure is a cat named Kitty who has to save her friend Bunny from an abusive relationship with a mad dog. It's done in traditional, ridiculous courage fashion, sure. But the sheer fact that this show is portraying a surprisingly accurate depiction of domestic abuse is really unheard of of a cartoon. Especially this one. Courage has given us so many monsters, but this is the one that's stuck with me over the years as the most terrifying creature to ever come out of the show. The use of a jarring red color scheme supports just how scary this episode's content can be. It thankfully ends on a positive note. <laughs> while also addressing prejudice and implied lesbian relationships. Which is pretty unheard of in a pre-Steven Universe cartoon. What more can really be said? It's the darkest Courage has ever gotten, but it's also one of the most beautiful episodes. I mean, good lord, I'm pretty sure this is the only time Eustace was ever nice. That's okay, Muriel. Nobody's perfect. I wonder where Courage has run off to. Who cares? Oh, Gravity Falls. There are so many episodes I could have gone with for this list, and I was really close to picking Into the Bunker since it has this, and this, and this. <laughs> Good luck sleeping tonight! But in the end, once I started considering horrifying implications in addition to creepy visuals, I realized that Northwest Mansion Mystery was really the best of both worlds or rather the worst. In this episode, Dipper is hired by the rich Northwest family to take care of a ghost problem. He teams up with their daughter Pacifica to find the ghost, which leads to the typical ghostly stuff you'd find in the kid's cartoon. You know, blood dripping out of animals' mouths and eyes, a ghost skeleton coming out of fire and forming his flesh, 
People getting turned into wood and an axe flying straight into someone's skull. Typical kid stuff, you know? Good old Gravity Falls. <laughs> This episode complements its creepier than average visuals with this really twisted element of Pacifica's relationship with her parents. Every time she disagrees with them, her father just rings this bell to get her to stop, like she's their pet or something. Like, that's uncomfortable at best, and at worst, I don't even want to think about it. This is one of those episodes that manages to be disturbing on multiple levels, and I really have to give credit to episodes that can do that. Probably one of the best episodes of the show, I even made a YouTube poop of it, watch that by the way, but man does it know how to unnerve its audience. Oh yeah, and the ending is the cherry on top of this delicious yet questionable looking cake. Something's coming! Something big! Oh my god! Well, I heard that Dark Harvest was one of the most disturbing cartoon episodes ever made, and I've never seen it. Honestly, how bad could it be? I... 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 I mean... Wow. What does one even say about an episode like this? It's 11 minutes of Zim stealing people's organs and replacing them with random, everyday objects. And yeah, it's about as nauseating as it sounds. You've probably heard all about how creepy this episode is already, but my high expectations were completely met when I watched it. It's a startling mix of body horror, scary audio, good pacing, and as I said before, just a bunch of truly nauseating visuals. Yeah, this and number one are the episodes that made me physically sick when I watched them. And even though this episode doesn't have any psychological horror, aside from, well, the complete lack of a conclusion, it more than makes up for it with just about every other type of horror you can possibly cram into a kid's show. Speaking of cram, have you even looked at this abomination? I've been working out. That is the scariest fucking thing I have ever seen in my entire life. I don't think any cartoon has been as consistently horrifying as Adventure Time. Sure, it's got a lot of pleasant imagery and funny moments, but when this show goes for all-out horror, it nails it every time. Only one! I ran into the same problem as Courage with this show. There were simply too many episodes to choose from. And while No One Can Hear You is a definite honorable mention, in the end, my pick for the most disturbing cartoon episode ever made is Escape from the Citadel. Finn and Jake break into an advanced super prison in order to meet Finn's dad, but he turns out to be a total clod. Oh, we... we don't have a Star Skipper. Also, Finn's your son. What? No Star Skipper? Okay, great. Aside from a delightfully nauseating image of Martin's flesh getting burned off and then regenerated in an equally nauseating manner, there's not a whole lot of creepiness to be found in the first half of the episode. But then... What? Fall. <sighs> the Lich is without a doubt one of the most disturbing things ever created for a kids show. His speech is absolutely chilling and seeing how powerless Finn is against him is indescribably scary. There is only darkness for you, and only death for your people. These ancients are just the beginning. You are strong, child. But I am beyond strength. I am the end. And I have come for you, Finn. Then, Finn throws some of those nutrients that healed Martin's leg at the Lich, and somehow the Lich gets even scarier. <laughs> Right in the doorbell! With the Lich terrifyingly dispatched, Finn tries to stop his deadbeat dad from escaping. His struggle to hold on to his dad's fleeing ship causes his grass sword to turn his entire arm into a gigantic grass vine, which attaches itself to Martin's ship and causes Finn tremendous pain. I guess we can talk about how disturbing it is that Finn's dad is the cause of this physical and emotional pain and he doesn't care whatsoever, but this episode isn't done horrifying you yet. 
Eventually, under tremendous pressure, Finn's arm comes completely off. I don't know if any other kids show has ever done that to its main character, but that's honestly the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in any kids show ever. After three seasons of subtle foreshadowing that this would happen, Finn's arm is now gone, severed, just like the hopes of reconnecting with his real family. But hey, he gets his arm back once a bee makes him a new one, so whatever. Stupid corporate mandating requiring that all characters in the show retain their original appearances. Regardless of what came after, this is the most disturbing chapter in the sprawling story of Adventure Time. And it's my pick for the most disturbing cartoon episode of all time. It'll be okay, dude. So that was my list. Do you like it? Do you not like it? I don't know why you wouldn't. I thought it was pretty well rounded and whatever and stuff. And I even put Dark Harvest on there. But you know, let me know in the comments what you think. And what your list would look like and stuff. Okay, bye. Have a happy Halloween and stuff. Goodbye. See you in, 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 in forever. We'll see you later.